So we've covered how the sperm are made, and you should know where that is, right? That is going to be in our testis, in the seminiferous tubules specifically. So sperm are produced there from spermatogonia. They are going to mature in the epididymis, learn how to swim. They've got quite a journey here. We're going to trace them in this video just out um, of the urethra. They still swim though after that. Um, if there's copulation occurring, they would continue swimming up the vagina, through the uterus and into the fallopian tubes. This we're gonna end right here. So they learn how to swim in the epididymis. Then they're going to, once they can swim, they're gonna swim. So they're going to swim up this tube here. What is this? This is the vas or ductus deferens. This goes all the way around and wraps around here. The vas deferens is what is either tied or cut during a vasectomy. Vasectomy, um, if a man does not does not want to be able to ejaculate sperm anymore, that's what is done. Okay, um, vas deferens passed here. We're going to pass by something. What's this arrow pointing to? This is the seminal vesicles or seminal glands. Well, you probably guess that this is going. To, these are going to produce something. Right, they're glands, they produce something. They're gonna produce um, several, so several, the sperm is gonna travel past several glands that are going to add things that the sperm needs to be able to make the long trip. The seminal vesicles are the first of those. They are going to provide something very important, um, fructose. What is fructose? It's sugar, it's food. These sperm need snacks to be able to make it all the way. They're high energy little dudes, um, so they need, they need energy. They're gonna produce ATP from this fructose as they go. Lots of fructose, um, actually a bicarbonate. What is bicarbonate? It is a base, so an alkaline substance that is counteracts acids, right? Buffers acids. So the vagina is very acidic. And that is in order to keep the um, vagina clean and microbes from being able to grow in the vagina. So this is going to help the sperm be able to neutralize that acid and be able to survive. Cells, most cells don't do very well in acidic environments. The vagina is um, stratified squamous epithelium, very protective. So those cells do are exposed to acid. They can deal with it. Some of them die. Um, they, it, it's, they grow back. Um, it's worth it to keep the microbes from being able to grow. So sperm needs to be able to deal with the acid. The last thing from the seminal vesicles is prostaglandin. If you have ever been involved in childbirth and involved with someone who um, needed assistance with labor. Prostaglandin is one thing that they do. They put it on the cervix in order to soften the cervix. So your cervix of the woman needs to dilate for the baby to get out. Um, if it's not dilating quickly enough, prostaglandin can help that. Also, sexual intercourse can help um, prepare your body for childbirth since there is prostaglandin in the semen. The purpose of this is going to be to soften the cervix so that that little hole gets a little bigger and the sperm can swim through a little more easily. Okay, so that's the seminal vesicles. The sperm now is with parts of semen, so it's becoming semen. Um, it's going to enter the ejaculatory duct. is the name for this tube effort. It has gained the materials from the seminal vesicles. The ejaculatory duct is going to pass through this thing. What is this sponge looking thing? Um, prostate. This is the prostate. Here, we're gonna pick up some more stuff. 
we're going to pick up some more sugar. We're going to pick up some antibiotics. Let's keep these guys healthy. Um, last one is prostate specific antigen, specific antigen. It is going to be a, kind of a liquefier. So it helps to liquefy the semen to make it more easily travel. PSA you may have heard of as a diagnostic test for prostate function, prostate disease, etc. cetera. So that's the prostate. Um, we now have this ejaculatory, ejaculatory duct is going to combine with the urethra and become this common urethra. There's different names for the urethra along these different portions. Um, not going to even tell you those. Urethra is the common path here for both semen and urine. Just after the bladder urethra, um, prosthetic urethra, exit the prostate, we're going to have another gland here that's going to um, introduce some more goods for these guys. This is our bulbo, bulbo urethral gland. Pretty cool name, if you ask me. This has several components. It's going to add um, main one I'm going to tell you about is kind of a lubrication slash mucus that's going to contribute to this, um, what is now going to fully semen. Okay. Did we do it all? Well, okay, so then, then the semen at this point is going to exit the urethra and um, exit the penis. And that occurs during ejaculation initiated by the sympathetic nervous system. Okay, that is gonna be it for the males. We are going to do a little bit more when we compare male and female gametogenesis, just to wrap things up. Um, I guess I can say it now too. There are 200 to 500 million sperm per ejaculate. So that's what we're talking about coming out here. 200 to 500 million sperm. That does kind of fit in here because with this conversation, because that's why they need so much stuff, right? Um, you need fructose to maintain all of those separate cells. Um, it's a lot of cells. <laughs>